Hi, Daniel Monforti here from Regal Technologies, and today we'll be continuing to build, debug, and analyze our remote control robot. Today we'll be first capturing and then replicating the robot's nominal power draw, which is the power that's being drawn by the robot from the battery while the robot is just in rest. In order to capture our robot's nominal power, I have our current probe and voltage probe set up just like what we did in our boot up energy test. But I've already been running the power on the robot now for about five minutes, so we've moved into the robot's nominal power draw. So what we're going to do here is, just like before, we've got in blue our voltage up in the top, and then our yellow is our current draw. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to take some measurements on our current probe with our from our current probe on our current line to then recreate the same draw with our electronic load. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some measurements of not this flat section here, but then these two spikes just so we can recreate that in a controlled manner. So to do that, I'm going to then use our cursor here. I'm going to use our manual cursor. And what I'm going to go in and do is I'm going to measure a couple things. I want to measure both the width of the distance between our lower section and then the width of our upper along with the amplitude change. So let's first measure our width of the lower and what we're seeing here is a delta hex of about 100 milliseconds or so and then to measure our amplitude I'm going to use our cursor here and we're seeing we have an amplitude right around 175 milliamps or so. And we're seeing a lot of noise in the signal because it's not just a flat line, it's actually a uh, almost oscillating sort of sine wave in there. But for how we're going to test it, we're going to view it as one sort of DC signal. Next, I'm going to get our amplitude of our spikes here in current. And we'll see that's right around 330 milliamps. And then to get our width, I'm going to change it back to our X mode. I'll first set that there and we'll get to this dialed in. And we'll see our delta X here is now showing about 2.4 milliseconds or so. So with those pieces of information I'm now going to recreate that with our electronic load. Next thing what I want to do is to confirm that we're actually drawing a similar sort of current from our battery with our load. I'm going to use our reference here. I'm just going to save a reference of our signal. And just to show you, I'm going to move our signal up, and our reference is here in orange. In order to have our electronic load draw the same amount of current as our robot during its nominal power draw, I'm going to use the instrument's list mode. In list mode, I'm going to set up so it has two separate steps. The first step is going to be our high level, and then the second step is going to be our low level. In order to do so, I'm going to go in and set our values for our amperage here. And then I'll set the time duration to be at 0 0.002 milliseconds, or that'll be in seconds. And then the same thing for our low level, which will be 0 0.175 amps. And our time will be 0 0.1 of a second. And now that I've done this, I'm going to set our number of cycles to be infinite. And then in order to turn this on, I just have to press the on button here and then to trigger it, I use the transient button. I've gone ahead and connected my battery to our electronic load and we can see here I've been able to recreate the same nominal power draw with our electronic load, which allows us to perform extensive battery testing on just the nominal power aspect of our robot. This allows us to test how long the battery will last when the robot's operating in just a nominal power. 